Hello guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we'll be rooting our device. As you can see, we have our fast boot flashing lock and our tablet in the bootloader. Um, this is a Nexus 7, really rare. So let's see if the first command works. We're going to click enter. Wait, give me a second. Um, we're going to click enter here. Fast, but um, let's go to scene. Fast boot. O E M. There it is. Unlock bootloader. Unlock boot. The warranty is already void. You kidding me? Um, so we press volume up, and then click volume down button, okay, here it goes, volume, sorry for the shaking camera, volume down, and then we click, so we hovered over yes, and we just click the power button, there we go, bootloader, erasing data. No, it's going to have to factory reset my device. It's unlocking them. That's good. Hopefully factory resetting my device will make it run quicker. Unlocking. Unlocked. There we go. That is so cool to watch. It says lock state down here might be kind of hard to see it's red. It was locked and it just switched to unlock. Okay, so now let's um, flash over our Magisk. Fascinated flash. Again, I'm using Hyper as a terminal and some Hyper extensions as you can see. Fascinated flash. I have to rename it. And that did not work. unfortunate. Let's try and... Oh, there's twerp. It's for a different device. So we got it unlocked. That's good. We're going to restart it just by clicking the button to switch what it is. Start our uh, recovery mode. We're going to do start. Click the power button. Google and it has the unlocked to show that it's unlocked. As you can see, it's an unlock symbol. It's kind of hard to notice. So that proves that the tablet's on um, and unlocked, or that our work is successful. The boot was like 10 times quicker. I'm not even kidding. Saying Google unlocked. Again? No, I may have just put it in a boot loop. We'll find out soon enough. So it's doing this again. If it says Google unlocked again, that means it's a boot loop. Which is okay, because then I could just flash over the file I need.
So I think I'm going to do uh, Magus instead of Super Sue. This is taking a while, so it probably worked. Let's just put it down and wait in the meantime. Let's get the latest Magisk. Magiskmanager.com. They probably have the latest one. Still trying to start up. Download. Sorry, my eyes are killing me. So, step one was well, based on super user. That's good. Okay, so, so method one. So, you could download the Magisk Manager, but in our case, we're going to scroll down to method two. Where's method two? Download Magisk. Now we're going to find that broken file. Let's sort them in name order. Magisk, move. Oh, wrong thing. There it is. Still trying to start up. And let's see. So we moved over Magisk. Let's search. Um, what is it called? Bootloader. How to get into the bootloader? I know how to do that. Oh, must be factor setting now. That makes sense. can't seem to find a link for the bootloader. Now I know what the box looks like. It looks old. Oh no, it's flow. We're looking for... What are we looking for? We are looking for... Hmm. I can't now the zip's not even here. It's like um oh yeah, it's in here. It's grouper. So what we're gonna do back, we're gonna just move over this file. We're gonna search flow, we're gonna place that with grouper. There it is. Latest image. was like off but so what we're gonna do is I guess I'm gonna create a new folder Nexus 7 and we're gonna move all the files we need into it and I'm gonna obviously copy some of the other files so Nexus 7 we have twerp first thing we need Magisk. This um, thing here is actually really useful, I have to say. Latest Magisk zip. That's cool. Cool. Just cool. Okay. Anyway, 
is um, yeah, this control C Nexus. So we want to use twerp, then magisk, and then we will go on to doing grouper. But before we do grouper, I have to make my own changes. Super Sue. After I delete that, I guess we will. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Still trying to start up. Takes a while. So basically, let me explain these files. On um, the first one, Magisk. That will be what we use for rooting our tablet. And it would basically be the bootloader file image. But first, we have to put on Twerp. Team Windows Recover Team Win Recovery Project. And that helps with flashing over these two files to basically move them into the device to make sure that they work. So replacing two partitions with these files. And I think and I think I explained that well. And the Net Hunter Grouper Lollipop is actually Yeah, let's not read them up. Um, let's look at Cali Net Hunter very quick so you know what that is. Cali Net Hunter. Wait, is it really? Yeah, you can get it with Magisk. That's cool. Cool, just cool. So this is what it looks like. It's just I don't want to get the X. I want to get Venom. If it allows me to. If not, then I'm okay with X. Or XFC. That's cool. Um, man, just I might use that. But might as well just flash over the. Other thing. Which I forgot. Oh well. I'm um, Kali Net Hunter. Let's look into that. Both the same link, basically. Welcome. Here it is. Our tablet's online. <laughs> Never mind about that. We're using this tablet, by the way. So let's get this on camera. There it is. Welcome your language English. Next. We're in this network. Uh, I guess. I'm just checking if it's right. It is. Okay. So we're connecting, obtaining IP address, connected. Checking connection, this can take up to two minutes. It better not. Okay, where is a good point of concentration? Checking for updates, there won't be any. There we go. So tap and go. Oh, I, I'm so lucky I get to do this again. It's the best thing ever. So first, we're going to get my phone. What we're going to do is we're going to click. Um, we're going to take our phone. We're going to log in. Right? I'm going to take this device, and I'm going to just simply put it on top. Never mind. Give me a second.
with. I'm going to, um, okay, fine. Here, I'm going to take this tablet, I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to take my phone and I'm going to just see. So I'm going to. Hold it there. Checking your other device. Tap and go, lock and verify. Enter your pin or use fingerprint. I have to use fingerprint. Copy accounts and data to your other device. Okay. Getting accounts and data. And this is getting accounts and data. And Okay, we're done. Place for I don't know, found. Oh well. So there it is. Just a second. Here we're done. Also, you can use Android Beam with NFC, or to just tap the other device. And then it tells you a message: This device was used to set up your Nexus 7 with your Google account. Next, um, backup for Nexus 7. I already have my backup which I did not take. Apps include all apps. Done. Next. Next. Restoring. Would you look at that? Now, here's the bad thing about that. When we restore it, we're going to have to factor or set it again. Oh, no way. It's our Google Play library. Okay. So here's a tablet. And there we go. Oh, there's still some things that I have to update. Google Wallet no longer exists. Well, let's see what that looks like. Update Wallet. Yeah. We're going to just. We're going to shut it down again into the bootloader. So, that is pretty nice to show you guys the tap and pay feature. I'm happy that I was able to do that. So, we're going to power it off. By the way, I look up to the side because that's where my screen is. I can see myself through it. If you're wondering, hey Joseph, how can you see yourself through it? Well, look for yourself. Look at this infinite corridor that I bend to my will. E. It's kind of hard. Oh well. So let's look at the hacks that Cali Net Hunter can do. Okay, actually, never mind. Let's turn this on. So, same thing as last time. Look at all those two buttons. And here we are, we're in the bootloader. And we're going to just basic, we're going to plug it in. And we're going to move over, we have to move over TWRP. So let's go to scene. Fast boot. To CD. Please don't get disconnected. Okay, um, we have to move the files back. Never mind, we don't. And then I have 
have to do another N. Yeah, Hunter. Okay, we're going to have to move that back to our main directory. So while I carefully hold over my tablet, we're going to look in here. There shouldn't be NetHunter group or Lollipop. We don't need that. Um, Nexus 7. Let's, let's try now. Oh, fast big flash. Oh, let's look at the guide. Because we have that to our disposal. Where's the command? Okay. Download super into twerp recovery. Oh yes, we have to get twerp recovery first. Flash. Okay, I can do this. Okay, we have to move over the file again. This is a pain, and the way I'm holding my tablet is also a pain. So, we're going to move that over. Flash TW. Grouper. Here it is. Enter. Sending recovery written. Oh, there we go. Finished. Okay, so now we're going to click on the arrows, and we're going to go up, power off, recovery mode. And then we're going to click the power button to select that. Google. Okay, I think I can disconnect this. Okay, good. There it is. Twerp. TWRP. Team 1. There it is. Unmodified system partition. Keep system read only. Swipe to allow modif modification. Swipe. There we go. Now we're going to click install. And, oh, let me plug this in first. It's going to say that, it's going to say that the directory is called SD card, but it's actually not SD card. And we all know that. So next is 7. We want to move over. Magisk, this PC, Nexus 7, internal, and we're going to just drop this in the main directory. We're going to look here. Let's go uh, install, and there it is. We have a file here, and it says, oh, we don't need this anymore. Magisk 16.0, whatever. We're going to click on that, and here we go, guys. There we go. It's installing Magisk. Founding. It's like, yep, yeah, quality rooting. And now we're going to go click the back button. And we're going to add the other file. Oh, we X out of that. Um, let's go documents. Yeah. Okay, this is really killing my hand. Ow.
something just popped. And we will go in Nexus 7. This folder is empty. Oh yeah, we moved everything. That's good. Not to a group or lollipop. Control C. Oh. Okay, that's good. This PC, Nexus, storage, paste it in. There we go. Now I have to make sure that the connection does not drop at all costs. Three minutes. Hmm. That does not look good. I'll cut it off soon. Oh well. Two more minutes. Actually, not two more minutes, but I'd say one minute. Okay. Now it's like one more minute. Now it's like 30 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 13 and a half seconds. Okay, let's look for the file. We're gonna just, now we don't, we can unplug. We're gonna go back, and we're gonna go back in, scroll down, no, Hunter Grouper. Moment of truth. What am I, what else am I gonna say? Um, time to see what actually happens. No, that sounds terrible, but we'll go with it. There it is. <gasps> look at that. That way, this is so cool. I understand about the possible security risks. Rip security. Custom installation. Select applications to install. We don't want SuperSue. We want NetHunter. We do want VNC. Use for GPS and Gizmet. Use for mounting CD-ROM images. Hacker's keyboard, FR analyzer, USB keyboard, Csploit, router key gen. So we, I selected everything but SuperSU. We're going to click on Next. Um, yes, select of continue with select applications. Yes. Install nano binary. Install custom boot animation. Oh, that's going to be cool. Install Prox Droid. Prox. Prox. Let's search what that is. It's always good to search something before you go ahead. What is Prox Droid? What is Prox Mark? What is it? Hmm. RFID! Yes! NFC hacks! I'm okay, I'm sorry. I'm Yes! That means I can go over to my community pool, put my tablet to it, and it would hack into it. This is big. Nano binary. Let's look back into the way. How to okay install nano binary. I'm gonna just do it just to be safe. There we go, 40%. It's installing the applications. It says it's installing nano net hunter wallpapers, custom boot image, kernel, installing any kernel too. That's what it's actually called. Checking for Kali C CH root and kernel installation completed. Oh, this is great. This is like, I have wanted this ever since 2016. And it's 2018, almost 2019. 
Oh, not really, but anyways, and I finally get it. I am so happy. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. I, was, I already said that. I'm sorry, I'm just so happy I got this. Now I can, like, sit by the government. No, I'm kidding, I would never do that. I already promised to a lot of people that I would never do that, so... Unless they ask me to. Like, come up to me and, Hey, Joseph, wanna hack us? We'll pay you money. Yeah. And extracting Kali FS full tard XZ. So it's installing the CH root. So I'd be able to use a Kali terminal from my tablet. This is really big. I'm so happy I can do this. I'm gonna, in a little, I'm gonna jump around the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this knee, you're a bit weak. No, I'm kidding. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay. Pushing modules. And this is like a legit console. I'm going to definitely save this file when I finish. So I can like show somebody that thinks they're a hacker at this file. Now, what is that? Oh, it's me installing Kali to my tablet so I can hack you right now. No, okay. I wouldn't do that either. I don't hack people if they don't if they don't ask me to. Unless it's Minecraft, then hack clients definitely. Anyways, um, ninety percent. This can take a while. Okay. Okay. Still ninety percent. This is so cool how every single time you flash over a file, it has like a different installer. And I like the cal I like the installers for Torp. When I finish this, I have to wipe cache and Delvic. Whatever that is. I forgot to do that though, so I guess it doesn't matter. We could probably like wipe it from here as we can see. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave very quick. I will be right back. In the meantime, I will do um wait, I'm gonna regret this. Be careful, this may give you seizures if you're not good with fast moving images. Here it is. There you go. File, new tab. Oh, I can't. Can I like split? File, view. There's not good. I meant to split vertically. File. After we click split horizontally. Okay, the heck did I just do? Control C. Now I just split. File split vertically. CD. Oh, you. You bond to. Go here. You bond to. CD slash. CD slash. Tree. One, two, three. That's laggy. When I come back, I'm probably going to have the blue screen of death. In the meantime, I'm going to go and show my dad.
Okay, it says it's still installed. I am definitely going to get off of this. Looks cool, though. When one is open. There we go. That's, that's better. So it's still extracting the data. So let's look at what it installed. Now mine doesn't allow us to scroll. It's inching its way. That's the loading bar at the bottom, that like white bluish bar right there. It says it's at 90% and it's extracting Kali file system full, which is kind of like a wow. Check for Kali, C root, CH root. It just budged a little. Never mind, that's just a loading bar. It's kind of poor quality, but it works and it's really lightweight. This operating system is 10 megabytes. But again, it's only for recovery, so. I like what they did with this. I'm so happy I'm able to finally get it on the tablet. So let's let's check what we did. We installed um, Twerp. We flashed it over with fast boot. Then we moved over Magisk and installed that. And now we are installing the operating system Android um, Net. Kali Net Hunter. So it's still going to run Android. I'm still going to have the whole entire Android system. Just do it with Kali Linux. I'm so happy. This is exciting. So, wow, I did not do that. Does that mean my device is encrypted? Is that good or bad? Oh. So we're going to be installing Android for the fourth time on this device. My sister installed it once. I got this from my sister. And I installed it once, twice, and this is my third time. Well, after it finishes, it will be my third time. This is great. I plan to use this. Why, Joseph, why would you want to get Kali Net Hunter so you can hack the internet? Well, I would like to use this for my house administration. I have to regain my power because my old tricks are wearing off, new security updates. It's really hard now. So getting something like this will re- Capitalize. No, I, I don't know. Allow me to be capable of getting back into our network again. I'm already connected. It's just I would like to have complete administration control over all the devices. So, like, I can hack into the lighting system. That would be nice. Okay, so it's also installing BusyBox. And boot Kali. It's almost done, I'm assuming. It's installed the firmware. Um, XBIN. I keep on feeling like it's budging over a little. Also, I might read this phone later, not now.
definitely not now. When you notice how your phone is lagging. <gasps> is my phone lagging? Oh, I just clicked on settings. I have a nice phone. I like it. And I do believe that my phone is lagging. Yeah. Okay. We know that. Let's go to... Okay. Also, Cali Lent, um, Cali Net Hunter has its own custom kernel, which is kind of nice. Two of my games have real important to PUBG World of Tanks. I'm really nervous. Hopefully this works. Work. Hmm. Okay, let me look at the. Oh, let, in the meantime, let's definitely look at the Kali Net Hunter thing. So I could do wireless injections and AP mode support with multi USB Wi Fi cards, which is nice because I could like proxy my Wi Fi through multiple cards. Capable of running USB HID keyboard attacks, which I will need. Much like the TNT device is able to do. Support bad USB MITM attacks. Plug in your net hunter to a victim PC and have your traffic relayed through it. So I could plug my tablet into this computer and start hacking, and it would look as if my computer was a hacker. Um, contains a full Kali Linux tool set with many tools available. In a system menu system, in a simple menu system, which I will definitely show you guys that. I've seen it before. I just got Fry's Electronics and I <gasps> finished install. I just got Fry's Electronics and I saw a guy and I like, I have custom ROMs and all that. And he pulled out his phone and I noticed a dragon on it that was identical, I identical to this dragon. And I asked him, wait, is that a Kelly Knight Hunter device? And he's like, yes, it is. I'm like, you are the best person I've met. Congratulations, NetHunter has been installed. Finish. Swipe to unlock. And then we're going to click white cache and delve it. Swipe. And there we go. So we're going to go back. I guess we have no choice but to reboot the system. So let's go. Install as a system app. So it's going to ask me prompt to install as a twerp app if not installed. I click yes. Um, install as a system app. I click yes. And then I just swipe. There we go. I do not want to pursue. Wait. Okay, let's let it start up. I want to see the custom animation for starting up. It's going to look boss. I know it will. <gasps> oh! The heck is this? No way! Look at that! <laughs> Look at this. This is great. <laughs>
Okay, I have to run and show my dad this paper back. That was great. I was talking to my mom, and she's like, why do you always have to put Kali Linux in everything? So let's look at some other things we can do. Um, contains a full Kali Linux tool set with many tools available from Simple Menu. We'll definitely check that out. USB Y cable support in the NetHunter kernel. So it supports a Y cable. So basically, I can connect my USB to two different devices, and it would work. Um, use your OTG cable while still charging your Nexus device. That's nice. So I can charge my device while having a hack USB or whatever you would use for hacking plugged in. Software defined radius support. Use Kali and Andre with your hack RF to explore the wireless radio space. I could like tap into the radio towers. Hello guys, this is Joseph. I know you know me, so that's why I'm saying hi. Bye. <laughs> That'd be great. Just imagine like hacking into a tower and you're like, hello guys. <laughs> no, no. That would be weird. I'm gonna I'm gonna take one at like 97.9 and turn it into a dubstep dubstep channel. What is this? I'm so excited I got this to work. Download Kali Net Hunter. Okay. Wait, when was the last update for my tablet? So that's the tablet I have. Actually, yeah, it's that. I have Android 5 Lollipop. So this one right here. They're all V3. That's good. Now you can also get it on Literal and Nexus. That's nice. Um, phablet stands for phone and tablet. I think my phone is phablet. So let's look at the other thing. H HID keyboard. So I could plug in my device and type in stuff. And it would type it into the device. I think that's how it works. Yep, keyboard attacks. Well, as well as a bad USB network attack. So I could do two at the same time. Allowing the attacker to easily MIT um, and uns unsuspecting target by simply connecting to their device to a computer USB port. In addition to these built in features, we got a whole set of Kali native tools and many of them are configured through a simple web interface. So I can control the tablet through the web. Also, something else that would be nice is I would be able to. This is taking forever. Oh well. It did before, so I'm okay with it. I will also be able to, if I have a wireless USB to USB dongle, I can plug that into Hacker Computer when it's my tablet, and they wouldn't even know. It's kind of like in the movies, where that one person that's helping the hero says, hey, plug this into the computer so I can hack it and download all the files. It's exactly like that. But not with a computer, with a tablet. Android is starting optimizing apps. Six out of seventy-eight. So I guess let's continue to talk. This is kind of fun. Hope you guys learned a decent amount of knowledge from this. Um, configuration management. So I can reconfigure routers when I hack in. So if I'm mad at the school light speed system, I'm not actually going to do that because that's government proper property. So if I'm mad at the light speed system, I can just shut it down and route it through my computer's proxy. See if my computer can handle a few terabytes of data. Hmm. I would say terabytes because everybody's playing PUBG. I don't think. Hmm, my computer's like, you, you only get 0 0.00001 megabytes. Okay. So that's first link. Let's look at the one from Offset. They're both the same thing. Just one looks different. Oh, yeah, we already looked at this. I remember this. 
I like how it starts with somebody laughing. Here's the virtual machine one, so if you want it for VMware or VirtualBox. That's nice. Yep. Tweets. Oh well. So yeah, that's basically that's basically it. And after a bit of prodding, we realized that this server was running a pro FTP MySQL authentication mechanism. So we've just seen that we don't have anonymous access to this web server. But if we try and exploit the SQL vulnerability, the SQL injection vulnerability on this server, then we can actually bypass the authentication mechanism and log in. Oh, yeah, actually. So this is a great starting point. We have unauthenticated access to the FTP server, but we quickly face a small problem. There are hundreds of FTP users defined in the database, each with his own home directory. We can upload and download files to our liking, but there's no visible path to code execution, unless we can find the FTP user that gets mapped to the HTTP root of the web server. Oh, they're trying to hack into a, a short piece of Python code can solve that by brute forcing the FTP user home directories and searching for the right user. The following script shows a simplified brute force attack. Essentially, we're logging in as each user in the system, and we simply print out the home directory of that user. So let's quickly run this script and see what happens. So in our testing environment, the first few users have nothing in their home directory, but user number five, or user number six actually, has all these files mapped to his home directory. And these files look suspiciously similar to what you'd expect to find in a web root. So we assumed that this was the right user. This user was really mapped to the web root. Let's quickly check that by manually trying to log in as this user. And there you have it. So it looks like we really are in the web root. We start by uploading a reverse shell PHP file. This will essentially send us back a reverse shell to our attacking IP. Let's quickly do that. Trigger the reverse shell using wget. or web get, whatever. And we get our reverse shell. Notice that we're running with the permissions of the web server. We're not oh, running as a privileged nice. user. Well, that's all. That back so is now that we have Linux. initial access to our web server, let's start poking around the PHP code and see if we can somehow elevate our permissions or elevate our access to other servers. Now, considering this is a dynamic e-commerce web server, we should expect to at least find some credentials to a database server where all the sensitive information is stored. And a quick peek at our access, at our shell of the web server shows us that this machine is dual-homed. So after a bit of prodding, we found a configuration file which holds some interesting information. Let's take a quick look at that. 25 out of 78. The file is called configure.php. And amongst other things, it contains some interesting information. For example, a MySQL Data server password. host. We can see that this is a non-routable IP address a username and a password. So we take these credentials and we try logging in from the web server, from our compromised web server, to the internal non-routable database server with the credentials we find. And lo and behold, once we try to dump the database into our 
HTTP server. We dump it into a writable directory such as images. Um, all the data just pours out. So this file, which was dumped from the internal database, is now on the external web server and should be accessible to us through our browser. Let's quickly try that. That is so cool. That's how you hack a website. Great. So our evil plan works. And this also confirms that our credentials are valid to the remote SQL server. Looking back at the configuration file, a few things so caught our attention. The first was that the database server was hosted on a different machine than the web server inside a non-routable internal network. The second was the fact that the web application was accessing the database server using the root user, which at least suggests some degree of misconfiguration. So this vector just got bumped up in our priority list and we decide to pursue it head on. We will need to upload some files. So we quickly upload some utility PHP and HTML files, which will allow us to upload our malicious files to the web server. But these files are interesting in a way, as they won't be simply uploading files to the web server. Um, the PHP script uploaded to the web server will actually take a binary file and load it into the remote SQL server using the credentials that we found earlier. So essentially, we're going to be binary dumping information into the internal um, database server by using the HTTP server as a proxy. So we quickly upload a reverse shell, a compiled binary reverse shell, and a pre-compiled MySQL external function, a UDF library. Now, this UDF library is evil in the fact that it can essentially introduce so, here's command execution. Here's the, yeah, here's his computer, I think. And here's the server he's trying to hack into. Here's the, ser here's the website server where he connected to and got the PHP files. He already hacked into that. That's why he has this skull by it. And now he's trying to get into this network here by hacking into this server. So that after he hacks in here, he'd be able to get a connection to this even better. This like computer, not just the database. And then he'll go in for that. Execution into the MySQL server. And our evil plan is to dump the files from the database server. And he did all of that just because they had an error with their FTP um, with my um, SQL to the MySQL um, file system. And this is interesting because essentially we're once again bypassing the fact that the internal database server is non-routable. So we quickly log into the MySQL server through our um, compromised Apache web server, once again using the credentials we found in the config file. And now that all the files are in place, the UDF files are in place. Essentially, we're going to be dumping the information, the binary files in the database to the local file system. So we just need to introduce the new schema for our UDF function. Once again, we'll quickly log into the SQL server as we've been kicked out. And once logged in, we'll use our specific database. We'll expand the schema to allow all these external functions. And now that everything is in place, we can simply execute the BD file, which is located in slash temp. And this should be sending us a reverse shell just as we run this command. Remember that this reverse shell is now coming from the internal non-routable MySQL server. And it's allowed to reach us as the firewall rule. So he's using the MySQL server to gain main control of the whole entire computer. Allow outgoing port 3306. 45 out of 78. So once we hit that command, once we hit that enter button, of course we need to get our Netcat listener. We should be getting a shell from the internal MySQL server. Turn it 
terrible. And there we have it. We now have a reverse shell with root privileges, by the way, from the internal MySQL server. Let's quickly run another reverse shell, as this will aid us in our evil plan in the very near future. So we've got two reverse shells from our internal MySQL server. What we'd like to do now is do a bit of fancy tunneling in order to expand our influence in the network. And after a bit of prodding inside the internal network, we identified our prize machine. This was the internal corporate mail server. So let's quickly ping that puppy and see if it gives us a reply. All right, so we get a reply. And what we want to do now is quickly run a very basic vulnerability scan against our mail server. And in order to do this, we'll be building a reverse SSH tunnel, which will redirect port 445 on the internal mail server to our attacking machine. So let's quickly build that tunnel and check that the tunnel was created. I'm recording. In second, I'm really, really busy. I'm installing the system. I have to be here. I will. I will. Um, entirely. We'll rename the console Windows session just so we don't get confused as tunnels keep on getting built. And a quick net stat should just verify that our tunnel is alive and well. Let's give that a try. Well, now I know how to rename a terminal with information on it. And look at that. On port 445, we have a mysterious port listening on our attacking Linux machine. We can run nmap and use a utility script to verify a certain vulnerability on that machine. And this is essentially running through our tunnel. This is quite interesting the way this is working. And unbelievably, we find that this machine is vulnerable to MS08067. This is the same vulnerability the Conficker worm was exploiting a few months back. So once again, things look nice and easy. We have a classic, well-exploited vulnerability just waiting to be exploited. But once again, two nagging little issues. The first is that our prize mail server is located in the internal network, which is non-routable to the internet. The second niggling fact is that we must assume that the internal mail server, which is running Windows 2003 R2, has hardware depth enabled, which we will have to address as no NX bypassing exploits were published at the time. After many hours of pain, we managed to get a solid exploit working which was able to bypass NX. And the plan was to send a bind shell payload to the mail server and then connect to that bind shell using another SSH tunnel. Let's take a quick look at how we implement this. Once again, let's rename this console window so we don't get confused by our tunneling. Rename session, okay. So this is the tunnel we will be using to get our bind shell. Let's quickly reorganize some windows here. And take a peek at our custom exploit. Notice how this exploit once again will generate a bind shell on port 444, and this will be on the internal non-routable mail server. And everything is in place, so let's quickly fire our exploit against our local host. And again, this will be tunneled to our victim mail server. And since our second tunnel is in place. Let's quickly connect to it. And lo and behold, we're given a prompt 
which belongs to our internal non-routable mail server. So this is wonderful because we can now easily add an administrative user to this server. Local root admin username, yep. And once that's done, we can attempt to create one last tunnel to the remote desktop port. Let's quickly try that. We'll kill our old tunnel and recreate a new one. So once again, this tunnel will redirect port 3389 from the local, from the remote mail server to my attacking machine on port 3389. Let's quickly complete this tunnel and then try to access this port on our attacking machine. I'm recording, Grandma. Also, I'm updating my tablet. Should I make a list of best about you? Oh, I told thanks. you you want to choose. He said, yeah, he knows. That is from uh, Johara. May her memory be eternal. Your his, his grandmother, uh, mother lost her. Sorry about that. Okay. Fifteen hours. A quick net stat should show us that this port is indeed being tunneled correctly. Let's give that a try. And once again, there you go, port 3389 mapped to our attacking machine. So all that's left to do now is basically connect to that port, and the tunnel should take us to the remote the mail server. And since we manually added an administrative user, all we need to do is log in with that user, and we have another case of game over. In this relatively simple scenario, we can see that there are often realistic difficulties which are not necessarily easy to overcome. You will often be required to use offensive and creative thinking during real-world penetration testing. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this webcast. This is a Windows 2008 computer. Mm, maybe earlier. Running one gigabyte per second connection speed. Hmm. So this does this prox mark, which is for hacking into cards, does many frequencies. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna take my prox card and start hacking into that. Sixty-four out of seventy-eight. That means six. Four two more packages to optimize. And that's no, that's my Discord.
so that's pretty nice, but it's pretty old at the same time. A lot of commits. Let's see when the last commit was. July 16. That's actually recently. So this is active. Let's look at their website. Rocksmart.org. Nice. And we can use our own device for that. MP3 client. Oh, PM3. That's cool. Yes. Okay. All right, so this is the tutorial for Prox. It's going to tell you exactly what it is and how to use it since it can be a little complicated to use at first, like extremely complicated. So what is Prox? I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and load up the tilt values activity. Now, what Prox is, okay. is it ties the accelerometer and the proximity sensor on your phone to one service and this service basically activates an action that you can set yourself based on how you're holding your phone so as I'm tilting the phone you see that the labels right there are changing so that's left that's flat that's right that's away and that's Toward. Now, while holding it in one of these orientations, if you swipe across the proximity sensor, it will perform an action. And all these actions can be customized by the user. So, you have That's one for left, right, That's toward, cool. and flat. What Away does is it cycles through your loadouts. So, let's see. If I do this and tilt it away from you see that Prox Classic is active, right? If you tilt it away, you know, the away gesture, and swipe across the proximity sensor, Custom 1 is now active. You do the same thing, Custom 2 is active. So away is dedicated to switch your loadouts without even having to come back to the app itself. All these custom loadouts, you can actually set what it does and the ones that are going to be available I right now trick. i can tilt the phone for, towards somebody and swipe over the screen is going to do something or you can trigger the notification panel emulate the home button Six, nine, or seven, eight, toggle so the ringer mode toast actually, a toast is basically a little text pop-up at the bottom of your screen that you've been seeing that's all that is and you can set that to you know say whatever you want launch an application and do nothing so for my left, it says launch applications for custom loadout one. So if I select custom loadout one, hold it left, swipe across, it's going to launch the gallery. So you can basically use this as a application launcher if you want to. All right, these are the settings in Prox. Um, this one basically tells Android to not kill the service and I strongly suggest you leave that on because if you open like a heavy web page or play a heavy game or anything like that it'll actually kill the service and you won't know that it's been killed so kill I strongly suggest you leave that on and this setting all it does is it, it sets a small vibration when you actually do something so you know that you've actually done something all right what are loadouts Loadouts, well, when I originally developed this application, well, this guy actually I could only do one action because, you know, proximity sensor is either on or off. So I figured, well, I should tie it into the accelerometer so I can get five actions, you know, left, right, 
away toward and flat. And I was like, that's still not enough. So what I did was made custom loadouts that you can change the loadout and it will package you different actions like based on your preferences that are set here to perform different things. So basically cool. you can select a different loadout and all these actions will actually perform something different. All right, how to actually use procs. What you're gonna have to do is, it's, it's a little different for every phone. You'll have to get used to the accelerometer and the sensitivity of your proximity sensor. All you do is from any screen while this is actually running, you can see that it's running here. Now, all you gotta do is basically hold the phone, you know, whichever direction you're trying to activate the actual action for. So let's say I'm trying to open the notification panel, right? I'm gonna tilt it towards me. I'm gonna get my hand pretty close to the phone and I'm gonna swipe across the proximity sensor, just like that. And it performs that action. Now, if I was in that my after so cool. and I held it flat, my, uh, my flat action right now just launches the home. So it's going to get rid of that. So I can go into my dialer and go flat and it's going to launch home. That is so cool. And it still gets our face. Okay, well that's about it. I just wanted to show everybody. Big what thanks to Java Kazi, whatever, for making this video. Okay, seventy-five out of seventy-eight apps mm -hmm. optimized. Yeah, no. Okay, <laughs> I wish I could. Um, I know. I can. Can you give me um mm -hmm. seven more minutes? Um, Dad, it's been optimizing apps for the last hour. It's seventy-five out of seventy-eight. Okay, finish reading that book. Oh, I almost dropped it. <laughs> oh well. I gotta clean it up on my shirt. There we go. That totally looks clean. 78 out of 78. It's hard to tell, but it says that. That means I will be done any second now. I'm assuming before 7.15. Let's see, what time is it? The final countdown. I'd say before seven fifteen thirty. I'd say before seven sixteen. Last third time's a charm. Third time is not a chime, it's the one that always works. Okay. Starting apps. This should not take that long. You have one more second. Well, basically finish it on the time I said. Starting apps. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. This is so cool. There's no installation process to it. I could just like log in and start using it. So that's cool. I could take my friend's phone and install Kali Net Hunter and use it as my device. That gave me an idea. I'm gonna do that. Okay. 
Okay, so. There we go. We're going to move that and that. There it is. Please update the tour path. Placed. Accept. And my emails are starting to come, and that's pretty nice. So we're going to click update. Accept. says it's downloading. And if it's hit something, it's probably correct. So that's updating. Oh. There we go. Is it done? There we go. So out of ordinary applications I see. I see blue N M E A C Sploit Drive Droid Um Hacker's Keyboard Magisk NetHunter NetHunter Terminal NetHunter VNC Um RF Analyzer and Router Keygen Showdown USB keyboard invoice um yeah that's it. So let's check out NetHunter, the application. You just start up Kali NetHunter. Um, and then we're going to click Grant. There we go. Granted, super user. Magisk Manager just crashed. I'm updating it. It says 40 seconds, I don't think so. And it also says that the latest Magisk Manager was installed. Let's check Super User. And it says NetHunter. So that worked. Calm to offset NetHunter. There we go. So let's test it. We're going to just take tap. Oh, yeah, let's also check the RFID um, field. I like to see that. So we're going to take our RF analyzer, click start, hack RF settings. Source not available. Hack RF. So we're going to look for that very quick. Hmm. I wasn't able to find it. So I'm going to just get the NetHunter app, drop it on my front page. And we're going to go to the next thing. What else do I want? I could take C-Sploid. Let's see what's in here. It's the full app store too, which is kind of nice. Core version, do you want to upgrade? There's so many updates. Okay, I'm going to just go in the store and update all. We're trying. Okay, I'm going to sign into my Google account. You may need to sign into your Google account. Okay, uh, let's sign into my Google account. Let's see about tablet. There we go. The heck? It says um, kernel version three point one point ten. 
bricked. Why would it say it's bricked? Probably because it was before. Hmm, I don't know. New Magisk Manager update available. We're going to wait for that to install and then we're going to open it. Settings. Unknown sources, we're going to allow that. This video is going to go on for 1 hour 26 minutes. Wow. Should have live streamed. About tablet? Okay. We've already seen that. Oh, yeah. I know why I went in here. It's way quicker than before, I have to say. I have all of these applications open, and it, it hasn't really lagged that much yet. Not as much as before. So would I call it bricked? <laughs> no. Um, there we go. Oh yes, again, I have to put in my account. Joseph, remember that. Okay, now I will because I said it like that. Hmm. Retry, let's go look here. Settings. And it's checking something. Okay. Seasploit is working. That's cool. Let's see. Scanning. Scanning finished. Unhack into TMB. Enter Wi Fi key. Is that like password or what? If I know that, I can just Safari. I want to see if I can enable root. This has my display framework on it. So Nexus. Let's MITM. And we'll do a um, hmm, simple. Start. There we go. Now we wait. So in the meantime, let's RF analyze, see if we can get that to work. Let's search for like hack R F search. ADSB receiver it has a picture of a play on it. That's interesting. Let's look at any other applications this guy made. Oh well. So far, um, working pretty well. I have a lot of tabs open. Let's check if there is any. Oh, that's cool. There's Spectroid. Let's look into this. Audio Spectrum Analyzer. We're not looking for that. We're looking for something that's more probably powerful. Um, now HID interfaces. Kali Linux NetHunter check app update. 
If there's an update for this, I'm definitely installing it. Okay. VNC manager, Mac changer, C, C root manager. Oh, C root works. Oh, that paid off. That's good. Um, let's try a bad USB MITM attack to my computer. Let's see if my antivirus even blocks it. Update. Edit. Yeah, that didn't work. VNC manager. Oh, that's cool. Um, there is MITM framework and map scans. Let's scan. Yeah. Zero dot zero slash. 24. Let's scan that. Let's grant and Oh, that's so cool. It added an nmap command. That would come useful. HID attacks. Okay, let's um, freak I exit out of it. Let's so C root is good. Let's add meta packages. Yeah, let's not do that. Home. So otherwise, it is working really nice. I don't even know if I'm allowed to bring this at school anymore. Hopefully, they'll probably allow. The heck? Play movies and TV. No! Okay, I'm gonna remove it. There we go. And, so, so far, I would say so good. Twerp is working. Let, let's check for any updates. We don't need it to be connected. Choose an account. This account. I agree, when or through it, enable network. Maybe not, okay. Um, let's back up existing, grant, granted pseudo rights, we're going to back up recovery, okay. We're going to back up, so it's back in recovery file. Backing up. Backup completed. Let's go backup boot. It's backing up. Backup completed. That's good. So now we have our files that we need for. Oh, I could also flash files from here. That's cool and handy. So that worked. Okay. And I got Google to work, so that's basically all I need. Next, I'm going to install um, Game Guardian and start hacking some games. I'm going to install some like Google Docs stuff for in general use. Yeah, I think that's good. Google Accessibility Suite. Let's skip that. Okay, fine, we'll get it. So that's good. It's going to install some stuff. Okay, with that, it's going to update some of our hacks. 
so far so good. And we got sea spoil, which is kind of nice. Do you want to talk to me? Yes. So I think I'm gonna end the video here. If you like, if you're mad that I'm ending the video and you'd like me to do another video, hit that like button down below. And if you want me to do another video with hacking again, like on this, then just tell me in the comments. Uh, technically the first and second things they said are the same. Anyways, I am super excited to finish this and I have to do my reading now. Bye. Also, feel free to donate at paypal.me slash armorotnt. It really helps a lot. And with these donations, I can do cool stuff like get this tablet. Yay! Okay. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.